Hey guys, it's Carla and I am back with another video. If you haven't checked out my channel before, I am an online reseller. I sell on Poshmark, eBay, Mercari, and Tradesy. Um, today I'm back with a different kind of video. Um, just a little bit of background if you haven't checked out my channel before. Um, I have been selling online part-time for about a year. Um, I am a full-time teacher. And so I don't have a lot of time to put into reselling, but I do feel like I've learned a lot over the past year. Um, I have learned a lot from other online resellers on Instagram, people like um, Voyages of Verb and Samogi Beth and El Ducho and just, you know, a lot of different people. Um, and so I thought I would share one of the pieces of knowledge that has really helped me when it comes to sourcing. So, um... I am by no means a brand expert, but I have found some really easy uh, tips and tricks to kind of narrow down what is even worth looking up comps on and how can I tell that a brand I don't know is expensive or may have a really high resale value. So I also want to say before starting this that just because something retails very high uh, and is a very expensive high quality brands does not necessarily mean that it resells well, but it means that it is worth looking up because you never know what the resale value might be. Um, and it's just kind of trial and error as well. So anyways, I have a lot of clothes over here and shoes that I thought I'd show you guys as some examples. So there are three main things that I look for when I'm sifting through racks and racks of clothes because you can't look up everything. Honestly, you can't even, in my opinion, if you've only got a few hours and you're doing this part time, you can't even stop and look at every single item. You have to be going quickly because um, otherwise, you know, you may be wasting some of your time when there's nothing really to find. So anyways, um, I look for three things. The first is I look at the brand tag because that's easy to do when you're sifting through it quickly. I look for how the brand is stitched or not stitched onto the label, how it's sewn on, the quality of the label, even the font of the label. The second thing that I look for is going to be the fabric content. There are fabric contents that are just more expensive to make and typically that correlates with a higher price point. Um, it's not always the case, especially when it comes to resale value, but it is a really good indicator something is worth looking up. The third thing that I look for is the quality of the item. And that seems kind of self-explanatory, but there are certain things about the quality that may be really good indicators that I should look this up. So I have some examples of really um, high end brands that are very expensive, some that have a great resale value, some that don't. And I also have some of my personal crappy clothes. It's not crappy, but they're definitely not high end. Um, I shop a lot at Ross or places like that. So I'll show you kind of the difference to compare. It's kind of just like a random thing over here. So hopefully I can make some, this can make some sense. So anyways, the first thing that I mentioned was the brand tag. So I'm going to show this with shoes first because I've got these already laying out here. So with uh, shoes, um, I'm going to show you some cheap ones first. So I got these in a recent Thread Up shoe rescue box. And there were a few ways that I knew right off the bat. These were cheap shoes that probably didn't have a very good resale value. So the first indicator, first off, is just the sole. The sole is rubber and it doesn't seem like very high quality rubber. You can even see that the shoe bends like this. But when it comes to the brand tag, um, I'm going to try and show this the best I can with my ring light. Okay, whatever. You can see there it says Bella Marie. And it is um, just printed on there. So this would easily just wear off. Like I could probably scrape it off if I really tried. Um, there is some good stitching in here. Um, and there's like some cushion. But yeah, Bella Marie, a few things with this. The first is that it's like this silvery little font. And just to me, that kind of indicates it's maybe a little junior. Um, also, it's the font and the, the uh, color. And then also, it doesn't look like it's embossed in there, which shows me that it's a little bit cheaper. It's not as 
um, expensive to make that. Um, even there with the writing, it's the same kind of thing. Um, and it's not like a lot, it just doesn't look very expensive. Um, so yeah, this is a cheap shoe. So I'm going to put those over here and I might show something else about them in a minute. Um, and these are some shoes that I had no idea of this brand. Some people might, but I didn't because again, I've only been doing this for about a year. So I got these at the bins. These are, um, Kelsey, Kelsey Dagger. Um, and the first thing that indicated to me I should look this brand up is, and it's obviously really hard to show there, but the Kelsey Dagger is embossed in here. So if I run my finger over here, it I can feel the indents. And that indicates to me it's more expensive because that is not cheap to do. It takes a lot of um, detail to get that done and looking correctly. Also, when it comes to this part, you can see there's some more detail. This is probably just going to be printed on there though. Um, so that's how I knew to look these up and that they retail for a pretty high price. Resale is okay on these. Obviously, I haven't sold them yet. Um, I have them listed for like $35 or $40, I think. Um, and I expect to sell them for about $25 to $35. Bucks. But these are very expensive. And there's some other indicators too I might come back to. Another brand that is very, very expensive that I found at, I believe, Closed Mentor that I had no idea what the brand was, but I could tell it was something to look up is these. So these right here are, uh, they say KJ, K Jock Saint Tropez. So this is what they look like. So that's the tag. Again, you can see that this is embossed in here and it looks high quality. Like it, you can very clearly read all of the letters. Um, there it's not difficult to read at all. Even the 41, the size here is embossed into it. It's like engraved. The uh, sole is rubber, uh, but these shoes are very sturdy. There's no bending them. And um, high quality items will not really, they're not easy to wear and tear. They take a lot of wear in order to um, kind of look horrible. Um, so these, yeah, this is not, nothing's happening to this. And even though it's rubber, um, you can tell it's better quality rubber than there were on these Bella Marie's. So, um, last shoe to show is this one. I got it, this in a thread up box. Now this, the resale value is all over the place and it doesn't sell quickly. However, it is very expensive. So the brand is Ramon Tenza. Now this one is only printed on here. Um, so, you know, not necessarily expensive, but you can even just tell by the font, like it looks a little bit more mature. Um, it's, you know, it doesn't look very junior the way that the Bella Marie ones did, in my opinion, which were kind of like glittery and that kind of thing. So I'll come back to these shoes as well. But it is um, on the bottom. It is embossed on the bottom, the brand. So you can, you can see that. Well, you probably can't see it, but you would see it in real life. So those are some shoe examples. And I'll, I'll show you just a few from clothes. So uh, the first brand, I actually had heard of it before, um, and I found this at Clothes Mentor during a recent sale that they had for Black Friday. Um, but uh, I honestly didn't know how great the resale value was um, until I looked this up. So anyways, um, the brand is an Aritzia brand, and it is Babaton. So when it comes to clothes tags, there's a couple of indicators. The first is that this tag is very securely on here. It is not going anywhere. There's no loose stitches, none of that. Now if it's worn enough, of course, there, there may be loose stitches. Also, this, again, engraved, not printed. Um, and this tag overall, it looks, it looks more professional. It looks expensive, uh, which seems kind of self-explanatory, but it just... Um, once you start uh, thrifting enough, you'll kind of get the feel for that. Um, the other thing, uh, since I'm looking at these items, I'll just do it as I go through the items. The other way that I would be able to tell this is expensive is the stitching. Uh, so it'll be kind of hard to show this, but you can see here that the stitching 
um, right there. If you really look at it, it is high quality. There shouldn't be a lot of stray um, loose threads. There may be some, but this is even all the way around. It is not really loose overall, maybe on the edges, but it's very high quality. Um, you'll also, the more stitching that you see, typically indicates that it's more expensive because it, the more stitches you create, the more expensive it is. So you can see, hopefully, on the back of this that there are a lot of details to this. So it's kind of hard to make out, but um, there's multiple panels of stitching here. There's stitching on this little flap. They're stitching uh, multiple areas on the sleeves, or on the sides, I should say, um, even and on the sleeves as well. Um, and so you can see, like, the more stitching there is, that takes money to do, right? Labor. And then if you look on the inside, you can see that this is not going anywhere. Like, this is high quality. Now, it may come apart eventually, and this is like new, but um, you can just see the quality in here that it's not loose. And I'll show you an example of something that is the opposite in a minute. Um, the other thing is that the more detail, obviously, that you see, the more likely it's expensive. Um, but again, even where this uh, is uh, waistband is coming out of, there's stitching here. Like, this is high quality. So the more things you see like that, the better. Um, lastly, um, okay, it's not on this one, so I'll show you on another one. So when it comes to the, the um, brand and tag and the stitching, I'll show you other examples that are not very high end. So the first one, actually, I think it does retail for a good amount at some places. It's called Kufio. And this is um, more of like a boutique. I think I got this shirt at like Ross or something. Um, now this does look like it's a fabric tag that it's like stitched in here. So, you know, I would probably look this up, but um, there may be other indicators here that say, uh, maybe it's not worth it. So the first one is if you look at this tie dye, <laughs> it's hard to see, but this fabric is like meshy. And if you feel it, it just, it just doesn't really look very expensive. Um, you can even see like some of the stitching over here. It's kind of hard to see is like easy, easily pulled apart. Um, also, uh, the hemline looks okay. Um, yeah, it looks okay. So this is one that I would probably look up, but you can even see here the threading is easily coming apart. Um, it's kind of hard to see because of my ring light, but the threading's easily coming apart. So that already is like, mm, I don't know. Um, even on the inside, you can see that there is stitching, but there's only like one, uh, this is I think called like the five loop or I don't know. I saw it in Southern Stone's uh, sewing videos, but it's only got this one stitch, right? Whereas the other one had multiple stitches to keep it from ripping or anything like that. Um, Another example of like a mid-end brand that I knew, I would know wasn't necessarily super expensive, but I would look up is um, this, uh, I got this from another reseller. You can see here it says Mink Pink, which I think does retail for a good amount. And this is um, embossed in here, it's not printed. So that's a good sign. Um, you know, there are these like darts, um, there's some darts like right here. Um, the uh, inside though hemline you can see maybe is already like coming apart um, which isn't a very good indicator and again it's really just got this like one level of stitching actually two but if you even look at the inside like let's see the stitching is not even. You can kind of see over here that it is not like evenly spaced. Um, the other indicator is on the pattern itself. And I think I learned this from Voyages of Verb. Um, they do have a YouTube channel. Um, they have a few videos out that you should check out. Um, so the other indicator right here, okay, is that if you look at the pattern, this is super cute. <laughs> 
but the leopards are cut off and really expensive brands wouldn't do that to a pattern that they're paying a lot of money for. So um, as cute as this is, I actually really hate that part of it, but um, you know, it wouldn't cut off like this. You know, it would be only full tigers. And like here on the back, you can see it's like tigers are like merged and a really expensive brands probably wouldn't do that. And of course, these are not um, without exceptions. Just want to make that clear. Um, another example of like a cheaper um, item that I could, I would be able to easily tell is, you know, a top like this. Now, most people would probably pass this anyway, but when you really look at why would you pass this up or why would you look this up, it can be really helpful for brands you might not know. So this tag uh, is uh, stitched and embossed. It's stitched okay and it's embossed. However, if you look at this, it's like very junior-esque um, font. And so that's already an indicator. It's maybe like a boutique brand or a um, cheaper brand. Um, the other indicators, again, I would look at the hemlines and all of that, but that's the one thing I wanted to point out about this one. Um, now this, again, is another example of, this is actually a good brand, um, an expensive brand, Rachel Rachel Roy, but this is the cheapest line, and typically when it's like Rachel Rachel Roy or Michael Michael Kors, it means it's cheaper. Um, so this actually, you know, it wouldn't be too bad, but even like right here on the back um, cut, you can, if you looked at the stitching closely, it is a little bit clumpy and not so even. All right, almost done, because I have more things that I really need to, you know, do. Um, is this. Oh, okay. So I found this at the bins. Now, retail is extremely expensive. However, I have not sold it because there's just, it's not very in demand. But I found this in the bins and I knew to look it up for a few reasons. Um, and that is fabric content. So I felt it so soft. That's why I suggest and other resellers suggest like um, El Ducho that you don't wear gloves and I think uh, Lux Huntress too that you don't wear gloves when you're at the bins or even thrifting because this is how you know you feel it and this is soft. Honestly I might just keep this for myself. It's an extra small but you know it's oversized. So when I feel this, it feels extremely soft. So my first indication is look at the material tag. So if you do look at the material tag over there, it says 100% baby alpaca. That cannot be cheap. <laughs> it can't. It says made in Uruguay. I, I mean, that's not cheap either. Um, so I need to look this up. And you can also, another indicator is, um, if I can find the top of it again is the brand uh, tag. So this brand tag is embossed very, very well. It says Yigal Azruel, and um, it looks, the, the this looks very nice. So I looked it up and this retails for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Um, I have it listed for like 98 because there's some holes and stains, but 